Hello, welcome today. My name's Rachel Burbeck and this is my colleague Helen Wall. We're from Birmingham Met and we teach um, at the Sutton Coalfield campus and Matthew Bolton in the city centre of Birmingham forensic science courses. What we're going to do today is just talk you through some of the different job roles that are involved with forensic science. And as you can see, unfortunately, we've had a bit of a demise on the stage and we've got some dummies that have had um, an unfortunate end. We've got some lovely helpers here today with us that are going to help us around some of the different jobs and hopefully you'll be able to see them in action. So we've got our helpers and I forgot to get their names. What's your name? Yeah. Kobe, who's going to be our forensic photographer? Rajan, who's going to be our uh, forensic scene investigator? And... Arjun, who's going to be our police officer today, and Evangeline, who's our forensic scientist in the lab over there by Helen. Okay, so uh, believe it or not, um, most forensic science cases do not get solved like on the TV. Um, if you're popular with programs such as CSI, Silent Witness, um, other police dramas, Dexter. you'll notice Dexter. <laughs> Um, you'll notice that the forensic science uh, in there is, it, it happens very quickly and um, the, for the purpose of the audience and the viewers at home. Unfortunately, the reality is very different. It's still as exciting, but it's a little bit more uh, of a longer process uh, and it requires different skills in different areas. My background, I worked uh, within forensic science for five years. Um, I did a little bit of crime scene work and then I started to compare fingerprints from crime scenes to suspects. So what happens at a crime scene? First, we have our first on scene officer. This is generally a police officer who will be called to the incident and he or she will be responsible for cordoning off the area with that crime scene tape. So this tape will uh, allow people to know that there is a crime scene uh, inside and do not go in. It also keeps all the evidence nice and protected and safe. In cases where weather is particularly bad, you get that lovely white tent that comes up um, and protects all the evidence from being destroyed. That first on scene officer would then call the appropriate people to come out um, including the forensic photographer. Okay. Yeah. So photography is one of the key things uh, in forensic science because it captures the crime scene so everyone can have a look at how it appeared at the time. Unfortunately, not everyone gets to go to a crime scene. All of the experts and the police officers that work within a case cannot go. Um, it's too much time. Um, the evidence may get destroyed. So the, the photography will capture the evidence as it has been found. Then our forensic science investigator will be called to the scene and they are crucial for collecting that evidence. So we can start seeing that there's a variety of evidence at this crime scene and it would be the, the FSI who would be responsible for collecting it, packaging it correctly so it doesn't get destroyed, and then hopefully sending it off to the lab. This could take hours, days, uh, you might have to go back to a crime scene. Something this small obviously wouldn't take that long, um, but if you go into a three bedroom house and you've got to be there for quite some time, you might have to go back day after day to search that scene for the evidence. So there's a variety of packaging that's used. Uh, brown bags, plastic bags, we have um, tubes, weapons tubes, um, boxes, to collect all the different types of evidence you may find. So if it's something particularly sharp, you can put it in a box or a tube to keep it nice and sturdy, protected. And also, it's not all about the evidence. You want to make sure that as a person you are safe and you do not want the evidence to um, harm you in any way. Particularly in the cases of um, the scissors that were there, they're quite sharp, so we need to make sure that we are keeping safe at the same time. 
Back in the lab is where the science all takes place. So if you are keen um, in your science subjects, you can use one of those disciplines to test the evidence um, on the, in the laboratory. Sorry. So uh, the forensic scientists would get the evidence out of the packaging and they would start to test it for the different requirements. So we have disciplines in biology, so you're looking at DNA analysis. Uh, DNA could be found on a variety of evidence. Such as the scissors. So um, if the scissors, unfortunately this was the murder weapon, they would have a lot of DNA on, so they would go to a DNA specialist someone that's probably got a biology degree in science, um, and they would look at that. Also, you can get DNA from cigarette ends, glasses, bottles, um, jewellery. So there's a variety of different uh, sources of that DNA. Fingerprints are the most popular type of evidence and the one that you try and find the quickest because Fingerprints are different to everyone. No two people in the world will have the same fingerprints. So it's really important that you can try and find that vital piece of evidence. Believe it or not, fingerprints will be on everything. Um, no one can avoid touching things. Even if you wear gloves, there is um, new technology looking at gloves and the different types of patterns that gloves leave. So we are advancing past the criminals now to make sure that we are trying to keep ahead of the game. If you want to get a job in forensic science, you can do a college course. Uh, that's what I did, uh, either A-levels or a B-tech. Uh, the B-tech we recommend is obviously the Diploma in Forensic Science. This will teach you your core science, biology, physics, chemistry. It will also teach you the um, more interesting and uh, applied subjects to forensic science, such as how to do a crime scene, how to analyze it, how to collect evidence. It teaches you the, f the photography application. So if you're a keen artist and you want to be a photographer, maybe you haven't thought about the discipline of forensic photography. So don't just think it's always about the science. There is the art side in there as well. Or you could do a science-related course or ICT. If you can just hold up that mobile phone for me. So digital forensics is the new sort of wave. If you are keen in IT um, and you, that's the subject that you excel in, you may want to go into digital forensics. And it's all about capturing information from digital devices such as phones, the internet, sat-navs, computers, laptops. Uh, what to do if you uh, need to recover something from one of those devices and you think it's been deleted. So believe it or not, when you delete something off your phone, it doesn't get deleted forever. So it's all about using appropriate methods to get that evidence back. That's definitely the new craze with forensic science. So if you want to go into IT, maybe you haven't thought about a digital forensics course. After college, you may want to go to university. I would say if you want to do the forensic scientist side, you will need that degree, that degree in that specialist area, whether it's biology, chemistry, physics, or ICT. It's not always needed. You can get into forensics through the police force. If you want to become a police officer, you can then specialize later on down the line into the forensic science side. Or you could work for an independent forensic company. Um, there used to be the Forensic Science Service. Now there's other companies coming up, such as local government chemists um, and different ones like that, that deal with forensic evidence. Psychology is a subject I haven't really touched on today. Anyone that's keen in doing psychology, maybe at GCSE or A-level, you'll see uh, programs such as trying to think of one with a forensic silent psychologist. Silent witness. Silent witness yeah. has got a forensic psychologist in. They will go to the scene and try and find the suspect based on the way that crime scene looks. And we can try and narrow down suspects by working out how their mind works. So if you're into psychology, you could go into criminology, the study of crime, 
how it affects people, how to prevent it, forensic psychology, how do suspects think, how should we uh, treat them in prison to make sure that they're getting the appropriate care that they need to prevent them doing it again, and so on. Evidence analysis does take time, and it is a full-time job. Um, unfortunately, crime doesn't happen between nine and five, so if you are interested in a career in forensic science, please don't think that you'll be going home at five and starting at nine every day. Um, you'll be working night shifts, day shifts, morning shifts, bank holidays, Christmas Day, um, which is something that nobody wants to do, but we can't stop crime from happening on those times. Luckily, it does get spread across your force, so you don't all have to work it that, that time. So don't think you will all be working Christmas Day. It is a very interesting job. I loved it, um, and I still do. Every day is different. Every crime is different. And the key thing to think is that you are doing something good you are giving the dignity back to the victim and you're hopefully stopping that person from offending again. Helen, do you want to mention about the goriness and the gentleman behind you? <laughs> Some of the goriness may put people off forensic science. If you are someone that wants to go into forensic science and you do not like blood, you do not like gore, do not worry. You can do what's known as the dry side of forensic science where you work in a lab, it's all very clinical. Uh, there's no mess, there's no gore, there's no blood. So you can opt for that side. So don't worry if you're particularly squeamish. However, if you want to go to the scenes, you will need a strong stomach. Particularly in the case of the body to the left of me, she's particularly badly decomposed, so she's been left for a very long time. Um, if that was a real body, no one would be sitting here right now because the smell would probably put you all off. Okay, so you need to be thinking about having that strong stomach. Are there any questions? Anyone that's particularly interested in forensic science as a course, uh, maybe as a career, there's an element that you think, oh, I'm interested in that, how would I get into it? Or maybe you've got a, a question about forensic science in general. Any jobs in forensic science? Um, at the moment, we are seeing an increase. So there was a short decline, um, but we are seeing an increase, particularly with the private companies uh, that are picking up. In the digital aspect, there are definitely lots of crime, uh, definitely lots of jobs, sorry, in, in that sector. It's being, becoming a bigger crime now is the digital side, so that's Anyone? where the jobs go up. <laughs> Anyone else? Yep, just on the left. Are apprenticeships and are they competitive? Uh, apprenticeships? Yeah. There are some companies out there that are starting to offer apprenticeships. Um, the problem with forensic science is you have to go through security clearance um, because of case confidentiality. So there are certain things you will be limited to be able to, be, um, to do as part of your apprenticeship, but there are companies that are starting to open up. So if you start looking, um, if you're from the Midlands, you start looking at companies, there are some that are starting to open up. Unfortunately, the police don't do any at present, but it might be something that's up and coming. One, one of our companies last year, we had 140 from um, a local forensic company that did through our college, but it was more on a limited um, you know, um, office type forensics to get you into the actual career. And then once you'd gone through that apprenticeship, then the different job market opened up for you. Anything else? Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. And thank you to our volunteers. Yes, thank you to the volunteers.